All right, everyone. Sometimes I think that Hillary Clinton actually just is mad at the Democratic Party uh, for some reason or another. Like, like she didn't get co she didn't get coronated into the presidency, and she's still bitter, obviously. Um, but I think she's almost mad at the Democrats, and I think sometimes she like satirizes herself and them. Uh, and I think she might be doing that now. Link in the description, archived, of course, where she's she's ranting about Trump potentially not respecting the election results, and we have to prepare for if he doesn't go quietly. I guess the idea is he's going to burn down town as he leaves or something, or go dictator mode. I believe that in 2016, the party that did not respect the election results and whined about them, and still in many cases are, I believe that was the Democrats. I believe that there was similar concerns in 2016. You remember when Obama was like, well, Trump won't win and he needs to respect the results when he does and stuff like that. Then he ends up winning and all of these people went nuts. <laughs> you had the pink, pink hat hashtag resist crowd briefly doing their primal screech therapy, uh, uh, their primal whining therapy on the White House lawn and stuff like that. Or outside of the White House, obviously. Uh, and, and Hillary Clinton basically disappears for a month and comes back and says, well, I really won. Look at the popular vote. Well, the election was a sham. Russia stole it, which we know is, is bullshit. Um, you've had conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory, and it's like either Hillary Clinton has completely lost all sense of, of self-awareness here, or she's satirizing. I almost think that it's the latter. I almost think that she's holding herself up as a court jester because I think... She's good at making money. That's the other thing. She's, she's roughly capitalistic in, in the selfish sense, at least. Corporatist, of course, neoliberal. She knows that if she says something like this, where the obvious intonation is, well, you're the one that didn't actually respect the election results, that people spread the sp uh, story around talk about her, which means more people see her interview, get to see the pitch for her book and stuff like that, and maybe she sells an extra 10,000 copies as the result of saying something completely off the wall and ends up trending, by the way, on Twitter briefly uh, as the result of it. I almost think that things like this, in most cases, are more about branding. She realizes, well, I'm done in politics. I don't think she has any real party loyalty. Like, she would have become a Republican if she thought that she could get elected more easily. She would have switched parties and given some lame excuse and done that. It doesn't really matter to these people because the two parties are basically the same anyway. Uh, barring party loyalty, really, it's just Hillary for Hillary at this point. She failed uh, in, in the presidential race twice. By, by the way, the first time she got edged by Barack Obama. She got schlonged by him. Um, she's been the Senate Secretary of State First Lady. She's literally only ever been in one elected office and then for, I, I think, only one Senate term, which is the funny part. Very qualified individual. She happened to be the wife of the president and got appointed to a bureaucratic post. And that's basically her career. And she bundled billions in the process. She became very, very rich doing almost nothing when you really think about it. Other than giving speeches and appearing uh, nice for the cameras next to uh, Bubba Bill before they uh, hushed him off uh, out of the limelight because of the Me Too thing many years ago. But no, not respecting election results. I can tell you what will happen if Trump loses. Trump will leave and Biden will be president. It's really just as simple as that. <laughs> he'll definitely do what the Democrats have done for the last three years. He'll, he'll do what traditionally uh, losers do, which is complain about it. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think this is going to be another election where the Democrats lose. They think that they're going to win all the way through it. Debates aside, because I'm sure that there'll... It only something like... Uh, only a slim majority of Americans even believe Biden has the capability of debating Trump. It was like 52% or something like that. I'm thinking, so 52% of Americans are bonkers. Uh, there's no chance he's going to be prevailing in the debates at any significant level. If, if Biden breaks even, it'll be a win for him because the expectations are so low. That's the only thing that we can say in his favor is that the expectations, the bar is set so fantastically low for his debate performances that anything other than a resounding loss for him, I guess, technically is kind of sort of a win. You know, stanches, stanches the bleeding a little bit when he loses as long as he doesn't lose by too much. Anyway, though, I have a feeling it's going to be a repeat of 2016. The Democrats with all their bravado and all of their high expectations will get their hopes dashed because of an enthusiasm differential, polling differentials, and probably a shitty debate performances by a candidate who is really not well liked within his party, namely Biden, versus a candidate who has literally legendary levels of in-party support, a la Trump. The economy is slowly improving. That's likely to continue. Yeah, yeah, lo repeat lockdowns in California side. Um, 
you know, you, you'll probably end up seeing a differential between blue and red states with blue states with crippled economies and, and spiraling crime rates versus red states that are like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, uh, damn right, we're voting for Trump. Um, the swing states probably join the latter club, another reason I predict a Trump win. And when Trump wins, the Democrats, I, I think Biden will be the sane one about it. I think Biden will be the one that's more solemn. And in fact, having Biden be your loser sort of makes sense at a time of a lot of social alienation for the left, a time of basically internal national crisis, um, because he is more relaxed about things. Biden gets fiery when antagonized, but if he just loses the election, I, I think he'll act better than Hillary did. I think he'll just come out and say, OK, look, we've got to respect the election results. Enough is enough. We've got to deal with the second term of Trump. We'll survive. Uh, America, great. We can do it. You know, we've got we've been through worse than Trump before. He'll do that sort of thing. And he'll sort of, I think, relax the crowd. He's not one of the Democrats that tends to whip into a frenzy, <laughs> mainly because can you see Biden getting anyone excited about goddamn anything? It's not going to happen. Meanwhile, Bernie will have a meltdown. Clinton will have, Clinton will probably do the I told you so. Here's what she'll do. She's going to give little bits of advice to Biden and all the others on the campaign. Oh, here's how you can beat Trump. And then when Trump wins anyway, she'll oh, I told you so. You didn't listen to me. Nobody ever listens to me. Ha, ha, ha. Buy my book. She'll make millions off of it. That's what Hillary Clinton's doing here. She wants money. Good for her. She's, she's making a lot more money than they used to make. When they left the White House, they were broke. They only had like three homes and you know, a fleet of limos and shit like that. They only had millions of dollars. How can I support a 10 million a year lifestyle on only $5 million? I'm broke. <laughs> That's how a lot of rich people that become formerly rich in many cases, unless they have political connections uh, or, or they're in crime. Uh, that's how some of these people think. Always restrain your spending. Keep it considerably lower than your actual income. That's the way that you become wealthy. That's about all. Peace out.